তো হতে পারে যে দুটা থাকতে পারে এরকম হয় যে দুটাই ক্যান্ডিডেট দুটাই মিনিমাম ভ্যারিয়েন্স এগুলো সব মিট করে ক্রাইটেরিয়া তখন কিভাবে আমরা কোনটা একেবারে রিয়েলি ইউনিক সেটা বের করার জন্য এই কমপ্লিটনেস ইট গ্যারান্টিস ইউনিক তার মানে আপনি যদি ওই একটা পেয়ে গেলেন ওই যদি ওই ডিস্ট্রিবিউশন কমপ্লিট হয় তাহলে গ্যারান্টি করবে যে এ ছাড়া আপনি যতই খোঁজেন দুনিয়ায় যেখানেই খোঁজেন এবার ফাইন্ড অ্যানাদার দ্যাট ইজ দি অনলি কমন অ্যাজ এন এক্সাম্পল ওই এক্স বার নর্মাল এর যে এস্টিমেটার ওইটাই হলো মিনিমাম ভ্যারিয়েন্স আনভার্স এস্টিমেটার আপনি সারা লাইফ চেষ্টা করলেও আর একটা পাবেন না বিকজ দ্যাট বিলংস টু দি কমপ্লিট ফ্যামিলি এগুলো এত তাড়াতাড়ি অনেক দিনের কথা অনেক কঠিন ব্যাপার একটু আইডিয়া দিচ্ছি যে কি হচ্ছে আমরা এগুলো কেন করছি এই বোঝানোর জন্য প্লিজ গো টু দি নেক্সট আচ্ছা এখন আসছি একটা কমন ডিফিকাল্টি যা প্র্যাকটিক্যাল স্ট্যাটিস্টিশিয়ানরা ফেস করে কারণ আমরা যখন ইন্টারপোল স্টিমেশন বেড করি এখন যাচ্ছি হয়তো একেবারে যারা অনার্সে ফার্স্ট ইয়ারে দুই তিন মাস করেছে তাদের হয়তো এত দূরে আসেনি আমরা তো জানি এক্স যদি এক্স ওয়ান এক্স টু এক্স এন র্যান্ডম স্যাম্পল নর্মাল মিউ সিগনা স্কোয়ার এই সমস্ত হয় এবং আমরা সিগমা এখানে ধরে নিচ্ছি আমরা সিগমা জানি মিউ জানি না তো এই এই যে উপরে দেখেন আমি লিখেছি পি অব দ্যাট তার মানে পি স্ট্যান্ড ফর প্রবাবিলিটি এটার প্রবাবিলিটি কেন লিখছি প্রবাবিলিটি শুধু র্যান্ডম ভ্যালিবল সম্বন্ধে লেখা যায় কনস্ট্যান্ট উই ডোন্ট রাইট প্রবাবিলিটি যদি আমি লিখি হোয়াট ইজ দি প্রবাবিলিটি অফ সেভেন বিটুইন টু অ্যান্ড ফিফটিন দ্যাট ইজ ওয়ান দ্যাটস ইফ আই সে হোয়াট ইজ দি প্রবাবিলিটি অফ সেভেন between say uh, 8 and 10 that is zero so we do not talk about fixed numbers it's always the random variable that's a property associated so ei ta ki ektu ghuriye phiriye lekhle amra ei bhabe likhte pari ei capital expert ta dekhen ekhono oi capital ache capital totokkhon porjonto ache totokkhon porjonto ami property likhte pari to amra এই প্রবলিটিটা বললাম 1 মাইনাস আলফা যে মিউ এটার মধ্যে পড়বে এটা 1 মাইনাস আলফা এবার আলফা ইজ এটাকে বলা হয় 1 মাইনাস আলফা টাইমস আলফা 100% কনফিডেন্স ইন্টারভাল ফর মিউ এটা কিভাবে লেখা হয় যখন আমি একটা স্যাম্পল পেলাম তখন ওই ক্যাপিটাল এক্সপারের জায়গায় আমি ওই স্যাম্পল ভ্যালু বসিয়ে দিয়ে এই লাস্ট এটা পেলাম নাও লুক অ্যাট দি লাস্ট ওয়ান ওই যে লাস্ট ওয়ান এর কিন্তু ক্যাপিটাল নাই কিছু সব ছোট এক্স লক্ষ্য করেছেন লিটল এক্স বার মাইনাস দিস জি টি এগুলো তো ওই নর্মাল এর ভ্যালুজ এগুলো সবই ফিক্স জানা এগুলো একটা ফিক্সড ইন্টারভাল এখন আমি যদি এখানে দেখি প্রবলি অফ দিস এই দুইটা নাম্বার ক্লাব ওই যে দুটার মধ্যে হয় মিউ থাকবে না মিউ থাকবে না থাকলে এক না থাকলে জিরো তো আমি ওটাকে নাইনটি ফাইভ পার্সেন্ট প্রবলি ইন্টারভাল বলতে পারি না so we again gave it a name we said uh, the probability now amra we can place a little bit of we can place 95% confidence 80% confidence like that so instead of probability interval we have a confidence interval and we call it a confidence interval uh, please go to the next slide acha ekhon dhoron ei mute ei true mu ekhane ache এই জায়গায় ট্রু মিউ আছে এখন ওই যে লাইন গুলো দেখতেছেন হরিজেন্টাল এগুলো হলো ওই ইন্টারভাল আপনার এক একজন এক এক স্যাম্পল একশো জন ইয়ে করেছে আলাদা আলাদা ডেটা নিয়ে করতেছে তো দেখেন দুই একটা বাইরে আছে ওটা ওই লাইন ক্রস করে নাই ওই ওই যে ভার্টিক্যাল লাইনটা তার মানে ওই যেগুলো ক্রস করেছে তার মিউ অ্যাকচুয়ালি তার মধ্যে পড়েছে কিন্তু আমরা জানি না মিউ কোথায় কিন্তু ওই ফর্মুলা দিয়ে বুঝতে পারছি যে এরকম করলে যে 95% প্রবাবিলিটি আছে তার মানে রিপিটেড স্যাম্পল 95% উইল কভার নিউ তো সেই জন্য আমরা ফিল করি যে লাইনটা ক্রস করেছে আমাদের লাইনটা বোধহয় ওইটাই এটা ক্রস করে নাই সেটা আমাদের লাইন না এই জন্য আমরা এই কনফিডেন্স যে 95% যখন ক্রস করতেছে হয়তো আমরা কোয়াইট কনফিডেন্ট আমাদের ওই ওই লাইনের মধ্যে সো উই কল ইট এ 
কনফিডেন্স এর জন্য আমি এখানে থিওরি দিচ্ছি না কিছু না শুধু আইডিয়াটা কেন কনফিডেন্স এটা ইম্পর্টেন্ট জিনিস এবং যখন ওই ক্লায়েন্ট দের কে উত্তর দিতে হয় ফাউন্ডেশন প্রেজেন্টেশন দে हैव টু एक्सप्लेन অল দিস থিংস যে কেন এই কত কেন ও কত সো দিস আর ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট কনসেপ্টস এবং এগুলো শুধু অঙ্ক করা না কি হচ্ছে এখানে দেখা আচ্ছা আমি দেখি নেক্সট তা জান এখন এইটা দিয়ে শেষ হবে আমি পুরো টাইম কানেক্ট করে গেছে আমার কাছে মনে হচ্ছে 1 ঘন্টা হয়েছে কিন্তু গেটিং ক্লোজ টু 2 আওয়ার্স এখন হলো আরেকটা হলো ইনফারেন্সের সেটা হলো টেস্ট অফ হাইপোথিসিস আমাদের ওই মিউটা তো দেখতে পাচ্ছি না সে আকাশে আছে কোথাও এখন আমরা এখানে বসে বসে ভাবছি মিউ হয়তো পাঁচ বা মিউ হয়তো ছয় উই হ্যাভ নো আইডিয়া সো দ্যাট ইজ आवर প্রবলেম মিউ সম্বন্ধে একটা কনজেকচার করা তো এখন ধরে নিচ্ছি রেনোভেবল এক্স ও রাগেন ওই ডেনসিটি এফ অফ এক্স সেটা এক্স সাপোর্ট হলো এ বাট এক্স ক্যান বি ডিফাইন্ড অন হোল রিয়েল লাইন এটা ইজ দি প্যারামিটার আননোন ইট ইজ ইন ওমেগা তো এক্স ওয়ান এক্স টু এক্স এন ইজ এ র্যান্ডম স্যাম্পল फ्रॉम দিস ডিস্ট্রিবিউশন এবং হাইপোথিসিস ইজ এন অ্যাসাম্পশন अबाउट দি প্যারামিটার ইটস এন অ্যাসাম্পশন যে থিটা পাই এটা সেল নেই নাল হাইপোথিসিস পুরো যেটা আমরা এতদিন ধরে নরমালি এটা ইট ইজ আপ টু আস হোয়াট উই কল নাল হোয়াট উই কল অল্টারনেটিভ বাট ইউজুয়ালি আমরা একটা হাইপোথিসিস ডিসপ্রুভ করার চেষ্টা করি যে মেডিসিনটা এতদিন এরকম চলছে কিন্তু আমাদের এখন ইমপ্রুভ হয়ে গেছে সো উই টেক দি যেটা এখন হচ্ছে কারেন্ট ওটা নাল হাইপোথিসিস আর যেটা আমরা নতুন হচ্ছে সেটা হয়তো অল্টারনেটিভ রাখলাম বাট এনিওয়ে দিস ইজ দ্যাট ইজ কাইন্ড অফ সাবজেক্টিভ So now we test an null hypothesis H not against an alternative hypothesis H A. That the hypothesis simple boli ota ke is called simple hypothesis. Jodi oi hypothesis complete oi distribution ra jodi completely specify kora. Ar kisu dana odana nai example. Ami jodi boli X normal with mean mu variance four. Ami mean ta dani na. Jodi ami leki mu equal to four. एग्जांपल दे समान আমি তোমার হাইট স্কেল আমি জানবো না তোমরা দুই হাইট সমান তো তোমাদের হাইট কি আই স্টিল ডোন্ট নো আর শুধু যে তোমরা দুই হাইট তোমরা কি দুজনেই 6 ফিট না 5 ফিট না 7 ফিট আই ডোন্ট নো তো মিউ 1 ইকুয়াল টু মিউ 2 ডাস নট স্পেসিফাই দ্য ডিস্ট্রিবিউশন ইফ ইওর ডিস্ট্রিবিউশন ইজ স্টিল আননোন তো ইন দ্যাট কেস উই উইল কল দ্যাট হাইপোথিসিস এ কম্পোজিট হাইপোথিসিস আমি যদি লেখি মিউ ইকুয়াল মিউ ইজ গ্রেটার দ্যান মিউ নট 5 अच्छा तो স্যাম্পল থাকবে র্যান্ডম স্যাম্পল তার ভ্যালুস আমাদের কাছে থাকবে এই এইটা দিয়ে আমাদের ডিসিশন নিতে হবে যে আমাদের হাইপোথিসিস এর ট্রু না ফলস এবং সো উই আর টেস্টিং এইচ নট ভার্সেস এইচ এ নাল ভার্সেস তো এখন এটা কিভাবে করব আমাদের এই ডেটাটা মনে আছে কি না ওই যে ইন্ডিউসড স্যাম্পল স্পেস বলেছিলাম অনেক আগে ওই স্যাম্পল স্পেস এস থেকে এসেছে এখন ওই ইন্ডিউস স্যাম্পল স্পেস তো আমাদের এন ডাইমেনশনাল আমাদের স্যাম্পল ডেটা এট আ পয়েন্ট ওই স্যাম্পল স্পেস এখন এটা হলো আমাদের নিউ স্যাম্পল স্পেস উই ক্যান কল দ্যাট ইভেন এস ইট ডাজন্ট ম্যাটার এটা হলো নিউ স্যাম্পল স্পেস ওই সমস্ত হাইটের ডেটা ওখানে প্রত্যেকের হাইট আছে ওই স্যাম্পল স্পেসে এখন কথা হলো যে আমি কিভাবে চুজ করব কি চুজ করব
আমি যখন ছাত্র ছিলাম অল্প কিছু আগে এই প্রবলেম কিছু সলভ করলো আর কি তার আগেও তার জন্য আমরা যখন পড়েছি তখন এগুলো আমরা বলি অ্যাডহক মানে এমনি বলতো যে এইটা করলে এই টেস্ট করো ওইটা করলে ওই টেস্ট করো কিন্তু কেন জানতাম না নর্মাল টেস্ট করো আমিও এটা করতে হলে তুমি যদি নিউ অর্গানিক বড় থাকে তাহলে ওইটি ক্যালকুলেট করেছো আমাদের একটা আবার ইয়ের একটা কোর্স ছিল ওর কাজ ছিল ওই ফেসিট মেশিনের ওই টি টেস্ট ক্যালকুলেট করা জি টেস্ট ক্যালকুলেট করা এইগুলো করা কিন্তু কোথা থেকে এসছে জানতাম না বিকজ কেউ জানত না তখন এসব থিওরিটি ওরি দেওয়ার ইন দেয়ার ইনফ্যান্সি তো এখন আমাদের মেইন কাজ হলো এখানে মেইন জিনিস হলো এই টেস্টিকে টু ফাইন্ড এ সাবসেট অফ এস অল ক্রিটিক্যাল রিজিয়ন ইট ইজ ডিনোটেড বাই সি আই ডিনোটেড বাই সি সি ইন আর এন এই সেট এমন একটা সেট হবে এই সেটের মধ্যে স্যাম্পল পয়েন্ট যদি পড়ে আমরা চোখ বন্ধ করে হাইপোথেসিস রিজেক্ট করবো আর কিছু করবো না কোনো কিছু না জাস্ট উইল রিজেক্ট আমার আমি কেন করছি কেন কতগুলো করলাম আমার কিন্তু এদেশেও তাই কারণে সবাই বুঝতে পারে যে কি কারণে এটা করছি কি কারণে ওটা করছি সব তো আর একদিনে বলা যাবে না স্টোরি ইজ ভেরি লং অনেক বছরের কিন্তু একটু আইডিয়া দিচ্ছি যাই হোক এখন আমি কন্টিনিউ করি তো দি সেট সি দি সেট সি আমি স্লাইডটা থেকে চলে গেছি আই এম নট অন দি পাওয়ার পয়েন্ট Can you hear me? Hello? 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 Did I get to look at you? Did I get to look at you? Hello? Uh, I I need the slides It says here everyone can see and hear you but I don't see slides Hey, Lina? Hey!
लीडर ए क्षमसा इंटरनेट फेल कर सर नतुन भाव कंटिन्यू करें ठीक ठीक 
hypothesis, now hypothesis. How to choose such a critical region? We are looking for a critical region which will satisfy certain desirable properties. The properties gulo amra toiri kori. We decide ke gulo how out it. Ami jodi onno bhabe decision hoy thale bollam the or ei bhabe hote hobe. Ami jodi decision theoretic hoy thale ohi bhabe hote hobe. So these are all classical Fisherian ohi timer ara korese ei timer. हाइपोथिस so ekhon first top line e lekha ache h not true tar mane amra jani na the true or false but it is either true or false false mane h it is true to dutok hote pare hoy h not is true othoba alternative is true ekhon badiker first column e dekhi okhane lekha ache x1 x2 x er ekhon আপনার স্যাম্পল টা নিলেন ওটা ওই সি তে পড়লো উই হ্যাভ নট ইয়ার ডিসাইডেড সি টা কেমন হবে কিন্তু যদি সি তে পড়ে তাহলে আপনার কি ডিসিশন ইউ রিজেক্ট এক্স নট ওই নিচে ব্র্যাকেটে লেখা আছে ডিসিশন ওইতে পড়েছে তো উই রিজেক্ট এক্স নট তো এটা করা কি হলো এক্স নট তো যদি রিয়েলি ট্রু হয় যদি রিয়েলি সত্যি হয় আমি একটা সত্যি হাইপোথিস কে আমি রিজেক্ট করতেছি দ্যাট ইজ কলড डिसन is not true abar apni h not accept true hypothesis accept korche correct decision kintu apnar jodi ei the true hoy alternative true hoy tahole oi ekta h not ta accept kore apni bhul korlen karon h not to true na apnar to true eke sutron this is another ei holo type to error ekhon oi era chinta korlo je oi decision jekhane correct shegulo niye chinta korte hobe na eta wrong decision it a probability of what's the probability the you will have uh, a committing type 1 error othoba probability of type 2 error so classically we type 1 error probability of type 1 error ke tara tokhon alpha bole sei alpha ei chole eshe probability of type 2 error ke beta bole sei incidentally i just tell you something the कम मैं Probability of type two error holo non-critical region. It is a non-critical region. A critical in the sense you reject type was non-critical you accept. So it is polle a error ta ke kintu ek ek true. A six star a polle accept korbo. A accept korte si ki ekta true hai ye false hypothesis. Kya mi accept korte si ek star ke when ek star. It is a polle probability of type two error. Kya mi lal Red 
এবং বোল্ড করে নিচের ইয়েটা দিয়েছি কারণ আমরা যখন ছোট ছিলাম ছোট মানে রিলেটিভ রেসপেক্টে কলেজে জানতে হবে এবং বুঝতে হবে পাওয়ার ফাংশন কে বলা হয় ইটস এ ফাংশন অফ থেটা থেটা ইন ওমেগাইন করা হচ্ছে এটা হলো বোঝাতে সুবিধা রিজিয়ান থাকবে সেখানে যত অল্টারনেটিভ যখন বলে পাওয়ারফুল টেস্ট তার মানে জিনিসগুলো খুব ভালো করে বুঝতে হবে জানতে হবে যাবে আমি ছাত্রদের জন্য একটু যোগ করছি আমি যখন ক্লাসে পড়াতাম অনেক সময় বিকেল বেলা তো দেরি হয়ে যাচ্ছে দু ঘন্টার জায়গায় আড়াই ঘন্টা তো আমি বললাম যে তুমি রেস্টুরেন্টে গেলে পয়সা দিয়ে খাবে একদম কম খেয়ে বেরোবে না তুমি তো আরো বেশি খাইতে চাইবে যে এগুলো তো আমি তোমাদেরকে পড়াচ্ছি তোমার কিন্তু এক ঘন্টা পড়ানোর কথা ছিল আমি সেটা দু ঘন্টা পড়িয়েছি আমার সময় অনেক ব্যয় করেছি তো ফ্রি তো এই ফ্রি জিনিস কেন নেবে না তো আমি ছাত্রদেরকে বলছি জাস্ট বি পেশেন্ট এখন আমার শুধু নর্মাল শুধু <laughs> 
ওকে লেটস গো টু দি নেক্সট আচ্ছা এখন লেট দি প্যারামিটার স্পেস ওমেগা এই ওমেগাটা সব সময় জানা দরকার যে ওমেগাটা কি আমাদের এই দুইটা সেট এখন আমরা টেস্ট করছি সিম্পল ভার্সেস সিম্পল তো এখন আমরা রিয়েলি কি করছি এই এখন এই যে সি যেটা আমরা চুজ করলাম একটা সাবসেট স্যাম্পল স্পেসের এখন আমি অনেকগুলো ডিফারেন্ট সাবসেট চুজ করতে পারি যার প্রবলটি আলফা সবগুলোরই আলফা প্রবলটি আন্ডার দি হাইপোথেসিস তো এখন আমি এই ওই প্রবলটি ওই সেটটা চাচ্ছিয়েদের মধ্যে অনেক আমার চয়েস আছে অনেক তার মধ্যে একটা খুঁজে বের করতে হবে যেটা আমাকে সবচেয়ে বেশি পাওয়ার দেবে অথবা যেটা আমার টাইপ টু এর একটা সবচেয়ে মিনিমাম করবে আবার ইস ওয়ান মাইনাস টাইপ টু এর তো এই এই হলো প্রবলেম তো সেই জিনিসটা এখানে লেখা হচ্ছে লেট সি বি এ সাবসেট অব এস বি এ ক্রিটিক্যাল সাচ দ্যাট প্রবাবিলিটি সি মান ইজ ইউর স্যাম্পল পয়েন্ট ফলস ইন দ্যাট সেট ওয়েন হাইপোথিস ট্রু ইজ ইকুয়াল টু আলফা সো এটা কমিট কর এখন ক্রিটিক্যাল রিজিয়ান সি সেট টু বি এ বেস্ট এখানে বি বেস্ট বলল ওই এ বেস্ট ক্রিটিক্যাল রিজিয়ান অফ সাইজ আলফা ইফ ফর এভরি अदर ক্রিটিক্যাল রিজিয়ান ডি দিস ইজ হোয়াট ইজ ইম্পর্টেন্ট এই যে লেখা হচ্ছে এখানে এভরি अदर ক্রিটিক্যাল প্রত্যেকটা ডি যে কোন ডি ওই সেট থেকে আমরা নেই তার সাইজ আলফা প্রবাবিলিটি অফ সি গ্রেটার ইজ দ্যাট প্রবাবিলিটি অফ x1 x2 falling in this when theta 1 is correct that money attack i mean tonke be bolbo the probability of committing type 2 error is smaller in c than the probability of committing type 2 error in d ekei ekhane ektu boshe dite korle you will see it kintu amar ekhon mane dekha dekha gele shomoy lagbe and we cannot communicate directly but it are to lo je amra dui ta আমি ওই চুজ করতে চাই এখানে ইয়ে হবে টাইপ টু এরটা কম হবে এই হলো এদের প্রবলেম তো এখন স্লাইড ওকে তো এটা আমি পড়ার আগে বলছি তো এই প্রবলেম নিয়ে জার্জি নেমেন সময় কাটাচ্ছিল এবং প্রবলেমটা খুবই সিম্পল কিন্তু তার মতো লোক সে খুঁজে পায়নি কি হতে সে তখন পলিশ গাই হি ওয়াজ ইন ওয়ার্স পরে টু বার্টলে হি ইজ দি ওয়ান হু ব্রট ব্ল্যাক ওয়েল বাট এনিওয়ে এটা কি হচ্ছে এখানে ইন নাইনটিন থার্টি টু দিস ইজ ইম্পর্টেন্ট হিস্ট্রি একটু জানা থাকলে বন্ধু না এটা তার বায়োগ্রাফি থেকে নাইনটিন থার্টি টু জার্সি নেমেন্টিক্যাল হাইপোথেসিস ইন নেমেন ওন ওয়ার্ল্ড এইটা তার লেখা এট দি প্রেজেন্ট টাইম দি প্রবলেম অ্যাপিয়ার্স এন্টারলি ট্রিভিয়াল অ্যান্ড উইদ ইন ইজি রিচ অফ এ বিগিনিং আন্ডার গ্রাজুয়েট বাট উইথ এ ডিগ্রি অফ এম্বারাসমেন্ট I must confess that it took something like half a decade, five years of combined effort of ESP, Egan Pearson, son of Carl Pearson, and myself to put these things straight. The solution of the particular question mentioned came on an, even, came on an evening when I was sitting alone in my room at the statistical laboratory of the School of Agriculture in Warsaw, thinking hard on something that should have been obvious long before next slide please 
The building was locked, locked up, and at about 8 p.m., I heard voices outside calling me. This was my wife with some friends telling me that it was a time to go to a movie. My first reaction was that of annoyance. And then as I got up from my desk to answer the call, I suddenly understood for any given critical region and for any given alternative hypothesis, it is possible to calculate the probability of the error of the second kind. It is represented by this particular integral. Once this is done, the optimal critical region would be the one which minimizes the same critical integral subject to the side condition concerned with the probability of the first kind. These thoughts came as a flash before I reached the window to signal to my wife. The incident is clear in my memory, but I have no recollections about the movie we saw. It could have been, it may have been Buster Keaton. Buster Keaton was a, uh, uh, you know, silent movie actor in those days. So that's how he solved the problem. Is now you can go to the next. Uh, the problem is uh, uh, quite. You know, I mean, that solution was not really that big. I was looking for how he came up with this theorem. So I can tell you those, if you have a book by Maurice de Groot, Probability and uh, uh, Statistics, it was first published in 1975. Uh, he was the professor at uh, Carnegie Mellon, and he was to come to a conference I organized many years ago, uh, but he just died just a few days before that. And it was in his book where I really got uh, the uh, idea how Neyman and Pearson came up with this theorem. Uh, actually, what happens, uh, you know, alpha and beta, they, if you, I, I wish I had a board and talk, talk I could write, uh, if you, if you decrease alpha, beta increases. If you decrease, increase alpha, beta decreases. If you decrease alpha, beta increases. So it is like, you know, pulling both ways. If you decrease this, the other one decreases. If you decrease this, the other one increases. So what to do? So they tried to minimize a linear combination of type 1 and type two error. So they try to minimize something like A alpha plus B beta, where A and B are unknown constants. So they wanted to do this, and then they found something similar to this. But still, that problem remained. And that problem, to solve the problem of one gets smaller, the other gets bigger, one gets bigger, the other. So how to do this? So they wanted to, they just thought, it is the worst situation. So if I give a drug, a medicine, the person dies, or it's fatal, and it is not fatal between this, which one? So the way we set up this, uh, uh, you know, uh, hypothesis, be to make sure that we don't commit an error which would be really fatal in a sense. So I felt that alpha is really the worst situation. So they wanted to keep alpha at a minimum. So what they did, they fixed alpha, like 0 0.05, 0 0.025, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. This was you know, really, at that time, Fisher got in for also a bit later. They were doing these things, uh, not using this, just intuitively. Things were being done in those days before this. So the, now the theorem that you have in front of you is where they fix alpha, type 1 error, probability of type 1 error, and they try to minimize the type 2 error. And they want to choose a critical region of size alpha, which will minimize the type 2 error. So they are searching for that particular subset of the sample space. So Neyman Pearson theorem says this theorem is for a simple 
versus simple. I have underlined. This is for a simple versus simple. Under the hypothesis and alternative, all the parameters are known. So if you see, I have written there, if there exists, this is important, there exists, we normally ignore that. We don't even read that. But if there exists a lambda, so there is a question of proving the existence of a lambda such that probability of C when the hypothesis is true, beta not means hypothesis true, is equal to alpha. So it's the probability of type 1 error is alpha. And number two, that this likelihood ratio, the likelihood under the hypothesis and the likelihood, we talked about likelihood before, under the alternative is less than or equal to some number lambda that we talked about that existed, that there exists such a number, whenever x1, x2, xn falls in C. So, I want you to understand this before I go any further. L theta naught over L theta one less than equal to lambda. This is equivalent to X1, X2, Xn in C. This two are, it's like your, your name and your, what is that called? National ID number. You are the same person. So it is the same thing, they're equivalent. Whenever L theta naught, L theta one is less than lambda, you know your X1, X2, Xn is in C. Whenever X1, X2, Xn C, you know that L theta naught over L theta one is less than equal to lambda. I hope I could make that clear. So these two things goes, you know, side by side. I have written everywhere. In the book, they sometimes don't write even, but and outside that set, in the complement, it is greater than. If this condition, if that holds, that would be the obvious opposite of that. Then if this condition, these two conditions really hold, then C is a best critical region of size alpha for testing this simple null hypothesis, H equals theta equal to theta not against the simple alternative by this theta equal to theta one. That is, that's what, he found out that night before going to the movie. So let's look at an example next, see what I'm doing there. So this is, you have to understand, you have to read, you have to understand. And as I said, left part, and whenever I wrote, whenever that's the same, they're, they're equivalent. Okay. So I'm taking an example just to show. Random sample of size 16. And we are assuming we have a normal with mean mu and we know the variance nine. We want to test the following simple hypothesis at alpha equal to 0 0.05. So you want to test hypothesis mu equal to five against mu equal to six. So these are the two sample points and it's a simple hypothesis, I guess simpler. Because if you put five or six, you know the normal distribution completely. The likelihood function of mu, theta is mu here, is one over square root of two pi nine, one over two pi sigma square square root of that, and all these things you get. So L5, you replace mu by five. L6, you replace mu by six. So our problem is this. Whenever that ratio is less than equal to, this ratio is less than equal to lambda, whenever x2 and x2 x and that is the criteria now. That is the criteria that if we find both sample points x1, x2, xn, where this ratio is less than or equal to lambda, then, and also the probability of, you know, uh, the sample point falling in C is equal to alpha. So if that happens, then if we can find such a test. So what we'll do, we'll try to find, actually, we'll try to find a test from this, this side, left side. In other words, a test, a test is a rule, again, to decide. A test is a function of your random sample. And that is like capital X bar, capital S square, whatever you use, or later F, E, these are your tests. These are all functions of random variables. And what we calculate is are the values of those tests. 
vector pairs uh, are synonymous to all kind of you know choosing the critical region. So then, what I did, I skipped a lot of steps. This ratio, I, you know, simplified. Sometimes there are constants. I don't know this lambda. I don't know this lambda, but I calculated. I just, you know, ignored some constants because the constants does matter. If I don't know this lambda, I would not know this lambda not. I got this lambda not by going through all these both sides. Whatever I did on the left side, I did on the right side. So ultimately, going through all this, I ended up with x bar greater than or equal to lambda not. That's called a right tail test. And it's because you can see also mu is greater than 5. 6 is greater than 5. That gave me a... Uh, still, that lambda not, I don't know this lambda not. I don't know this lambda naught, and I have to show the existence of such a lambda naught. And we, you can, you have to go through all this. You, you at home, if you have this slide, you can write and you can go through, and you will end up with. You might get something like x x one plus x two greater than or equal to lambda one. Then x bar would be greater than or equal to lambda naught. So something like this. Please go to the, the continue from there, and we'll see how we find that lambda naught. So x bar greater than or equal to lambda naught whenever x1, x2, x16 is in C. That's what you see in the other slide. Now, reject mu equal to 5 at alpha equal. We have decided in advance we'll, re we'll reject h naught mu equal to 5 with probability of type 1 error equal to 0.05. So that means probability of x bar, capital X bar, whenever we write probability, it is the x bar of something so we write like this x bar of greater than or equal to lambda naught when mu equal to 5 that is h naught is 2 equal to this how do we calculate this if mu equal to 5 we can calculate we can create the z statistic z greater than or equal to psi you know you know z x bar has mean mu and variance sigma square over n so i just standardize them so probability of z greater than or equal to i call it lambda 1 then probability of z greater than lambda 1. We have decided alpha should be 0.05, so equal to 0.05. So what I did, I went into the normal table, and I hope I picked the right number. I make mistakes too. So if I have a wrong number, you can change it. And so uh, in other words, this number has to be greater than 1.645 because I found lambda 1 from the table. 1.645 corresponding to 0.05. And going through all these things, my test, capital X bar, that's the test statistic. I will, the, the rule says, the rule says, rule is a function. The rule says, you reject that hypothesis, you reject H dot in favor of H1, HA, if you get a value of X bar which is greater than this. So I have. This exists, this 6.23. So if I go back, I can, your lambda exists, original lambda. You can go back. And so, so this is your, you know, your C, that critical region that you are looking for. That is equivalent, your, your sample point falling in that set C is equivalent to your X bar greater than or equal to C. So your C, I have written here. The best critical region of size 0.05 is determined by the critical region C, where C is equal to x1, x2, x16, such that value of x bar is greater than or equal to C. So best critical region is the same as best test. We call it a this test, this x bar, that's the best test. And on the right side, that critical region, the way we have found, this is the Best critical region. So they, in language, we don't distinguish. So sometimes we say best critical region, sometimes it's the best test, depending on what we do. There are a lot of things in those. It's not just step by step. You have to understand each step, what you are doing, what you are trying to find. Okay, please. I'm sure some of you have become hungry, and this would be my last uh, the likelihood ratio test. So that was for simple versus simple. 
now we want to, we want to test hypothesis like mean of normal is less than five against mean greater than equal to five because if it is less than five you still don't know the mean if it is greater than five you don't know so they are all composites so what these are again these are not law or anything we thought statisticians thought and this is a good idea to do things like this and the what it is when i write l of capital omega that is the likelihood function of the original parameters on the parameter space offer all unknown parameters and when i write l of little omega that little omega is determined by the hypothesis so what we do we find the maximum value of l under the uh, over the whole parameter space omega we find the maximum and we also find the maximum of l over the parameter space restricted by the hypothesis if i say theta x then suppose mean can be any but minus infinity plus infinity that is l omega but if hypothesis mu equal to 5 then l of little omega would be just at space at one point so you have to understand these two things here and then we find this maximum and we take then this maximum if you have two places where you have the, the maximum you know we don't know the maximum might happen over somewhere in the over the whole space omega over the subspace little omega the maximum could be somewhere else but we felt that if, the, if these two maximums are very close then chances are it's not it's true They're, but if they are far away then it's not true so that less than lambda we calculate and if we want lambda to be small lambda to be small when they we reject so we go through all these kind of things and this ratio we calculate and then we let's go to the next slide and i use one hat another tilde on that hat means over the whole space tilde means over the sub subspace that subspace is specified by the hypothesis okay now this is the last one i uh, took this because uh, when we study uh, what is that uh, the design of experiment, analysis of variance, etc. Uh, we have a model and after the model immediately it says sum of tau i equal to zero, sum of all the treatment effects is equal to zero. And I used to ask, uh, how do you know that sum of all the treatment effects is zero? They said, well, one would be positive, one would be negative. This I said, that is one is positive, five, another is negative, one and uh, might be there is no negative. There are testing the equality of two means so y i j equal to mu plus tau i plus epsilon i j uh, where epsilon you know they're called the errors and y i j are your uh, here i am using lower case but they could be random variable they could be value of the random variable so depending on the context and we we are assuming everywhere sigma square is unknown we don't know sigma square and j equal to 1 to ni i equal to 1 to 2 so uh, uh, it goes from a, ni could be n1 or n2 but n1 is 2 in other words uh tau 1 is observed you know i mean there are two samples corresponding to mu plus tau 1 and there are three corresponding to mu plus tau 2 so there are five equations here and two belonging to tau 1 and 3 belonging to their unequal size if it was equal i could not have proved my point that i'm going to make that uh, you know that sum of tau i equal to zero is purely it, it doesn't belong there it belongs somewhere else but anyway omega is the this is your parameter space i have written here so that if i it was not clear now it should be clear your parameter space it's mu tau one tau two sigma square where 
mu tau one tau two can be any real number, and sigma square has to be positive. This is, and you are testing what tau one equal to tau two. Remember, I told that if I know that two people's heights are equal or two people make the same money, their income is same. I still don't know the income. So that unknown income I call tau in here under the alternative hypothesis. So this is a different parameter space. You see that I call that. So what I was, if it was not clear, it should be clear now. Over the likelihood function, over this function, over this set omega, you would be finding the maximum of the likelihood function over this set. And under omega, little omega, you would be finding the maximum over this set. So you have to understand this. That's why when I was finding maximum likelihood over this set, I put a hat. And over this set, I put a tilde, because there, this maximum could be somewhere else. OK, so that is the scenario. And let me just quickly run through, I think. OK, now, can, you, can people see that? If not, I'll just read it. So L omega I have written, that is that includes all the you know, parameters in that space, you know, mu, tau 1, tau 2, uh, sigma square. They're all here. Then whether you use maximum likelihood or least square, because in maximum likelihood, uh, you would try to maximize that one so that you you know the likelihood and that is in the exponent negative of that etc. And this square you do the same thing really. So your answer is the same. It doesn't matter what you do. You get five c five mu mu plus two tau one. I cannot see myself. I better look at my slide. Uh, This part should be interesting. Uh, anyway, uh, yes, I can see now more clearly. 3 mu plus 5 mu plus 2 tau 1 plus 3 tau 2 equal to y dot dot or y dot dot, etc. You learn these are a standard notation for the sum over all ij. The next one is 2 mu plus 2 tau 1 equal to y1 dot. And then the third one is 3 mu plus 3 tau 2 equal to y2 dot. These are Normally, you know, these are called sometimes normal equations. And you, if, if you look at the second and third equations, if you add them, you will get the first equation. So uh, we can show that the, I mean, this equation, the equations are consistent by checking the rank. Coefficient matrix and the uh, what is that with with the right side? Co what is that called? Co uh, with the coefficient and you know when you take the right this uh, y dot dot y one dot y two dot still it, uh, you know the rank would be the same. So uh, I ju it just skipped my mind. But you can show it is consistent. But it doesn't have unique. The rank would be two uh, if it was. Consistent and unique solution, the rank would have been three. So, uh, if you want to solve, it has many, many solutions, infinitely many solutions. Now, these are, I cannot do it here. These are, uh, we have, yeah, stay there, please. We have to, uh, you have to trust in me because you have to look into books and read these things. But I, I'll just give you the reasoning. Uh, if you have an equation, say, x plus y equal to 3, so what you do, this, uh, there is one equation in two unknowns. You need two equations in two unknowns to solve uniquely if, you, if there is a unique solution. But you have one equation, so what do you do? You give x a value like 2 and then you find y equal to 7, like that. So you assign some value and then you solve for the other one. And all these points, if it was x1 plus x, x plus y equal to 7, all these infinitely many points lie on a line. So here you have a situation 
where you have infinitely many solutions. Because these are consistent, but they're not a full rank. So what do you do? Like we put x equal to 3, and then we solve for y. So we want to solve these equations. So I would like to mention this is very, 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 very important. From that infinitely many solutions, no matter what solution I pick, which solution I pick, it doesn't matter. This how one tau two mu could be different in different cases. But when it comes to tau one minus tau two, it result would be the same. No matter which one you pick, tau one minus tau two would be the same. Suppose it is three, it would be three, no matter which solution you pick. So what we'd like to do, we'd like to make our life easy. Just like x plus 2x plus 3y equal to 5, we, we put x equal to something and we found y. In this equation on the top, in the top equation, we will use the condition 2 tau 1 plus 3 tau 2 equal to 0. This condition is called uh, an unestimable condition. And uh, this, that's why you need to go theories and or read books and take a one-year course. Two tau one say plus two tau two, so, so they put that equal to zero, which means tau one plus tau two equal to zero. It had nothing to do. It meant some positive, some negative. There some equal to zero. I think that's a very very important point to remember when we teach this. That was only to solve this normal equations, because we know no matter which have the same value, same solution. That is. What we study in linear models and all this, it needs a lot of algebra, linear algebra, and all kinds of things, but we'll go there. So that's what we do. We put 2 tau 1 plus 3 tau 2 equal to 0. That leads to the estimate mu hat equal to uh, this mean of the sample, tau 1 hat equal to that, tau 2 hat. You get, these are familiar to, to those who have done these courses and where. All this, you can look at this. Uh, we are running short, so on time, please go to the next one. And uh, then on the top is the uh, solution of uh, the uh, estimate of sigma square. I use sigma hat square. Now, in the next next model, in W, lowercase w, yij is equal to mu plus tau, because tau and tau two are both equal to tau. And then when we found the normal equations, in all this, uh, we found mu hat, mu tilde equal to the mean and sigma tilde we got some. And then we, this is a different ratio, yeah, I mean, a, a, a estimate than this top one, sigma hat square and sigma tilde square, they're different because you know, but mean is the same, and uh, not mean is the same. Uh, yeah, it's, it's still the sample mean, and lambda uh, is that's called the likelihood ratio, and we are saying uh, that ratio is less than or equal to lambda whenever all those five values. Remember, we have only five in this example, or in C, and lambda. After doing all this manipulation, we ended up with this ratio, greater than or equal to k. 
whenever this is greater than or equal to k, our type point is less than. It is it is this set C where this ratio hold not. That's only this set is determined by this ratio. Okay, or this ratio determines this set C. Next, please. So we just uh, digress for one minute. One of the concepts, very important concepts in statistics, is degrees of freedom. Nowadays, in new books, because they don't have time to discuss all this, they just say degrees of freedom is a parameter. Many elementary books, they treat it as a parameter and they don't wonder. And of course, students are why we call it degrees of freedom. So here is an answer. There are many ways we can talk about that. Well, this is not the way, but I find this would be interesting and it will convince everybody you know, that this is an easy way to now, I square distribution is where you first saw degrees of freedom. Am I correct? That's where you saw the degrees of freedom when you did I square. And then you saw in T, T is a standard normal over a chi square divided by its degrees of freedom, square root of that, and they're independent, etc. And you also saw in F, where it is the ratio of two independent chi square, etc. etc. So started with is chi square distribution. I square distribution, but I square is a quadratic form. If you write sum of xi square, that is simply x prime x. X is a vector x1, x2. So you can write the chi squares in using quadratic form. And I will go through this. It would be very important for all of you who are in statistics. Will be taking a course in design of experiment or in analysis of variance. Uh, this little example would clear many important ideas. So please bear with me. So this is I have taken and this is called a quadratic form. All the powers you add basically, but you can also have other kind of quadratic form. This is and this is this matrix here in the middle is called the matrix of the quadratic form. And this matrix, you can have infinitely many different matrices and you get the same thing. But there is only one representation which will give this unity. That is the symmetric. When this matrix is symmetric, there is only one. And so we take this, when we write this quadratic form, we use this. We consider this as a symmetric matrix. If you look at this, this is a symmetric matrix. This is your this x1, x2 column matrix is your x, this is your x prime, and this is the matrix of the quadratic form. When we say positive definite d that quadratic form, it is the matrix that we talk about. So A is called the matrix of the quadratic form and is symmetric. Now a, mat a matrix A is called idempotent, very important, and highlighted in red. If A is symmetric, and if A times A equal to A, I give you two extreme examples. If you have a vector zero, whose all the elements are zero, then zero times zero, the product, you know, like if you multiply them you will get a zero matrix, right? So that is true. If you take the identity matrix I, I times I is I. And all of the item, to, uh, so zero matrix has rank zero. That has rank, like, uh, it depends on, if it is an N, N by N identity matrix, then it would be N. So your, all other matrices, I don't put matrices would be in between this with ranks between zero and n. So the rank of an idempotent matrix A, if you know that the matrix is idempotent, that means it is symmetric and A times A is A, then rank is easy to calculate. All you do 
to calculate the trace. Trace is simply the sum of the diagonal. All you do is you add the diagonals, and that is the rank of the matrix. So please go to the, these are important things that I have written. So now I write uh, a theorem that I will use. Uh, proofs are not really difficult, but it needs a lot of advanced knowledge of uh, matrix theory. So, and of, of course, uh, normal distribution theory and so on and so forth. So it says, let Y, capital Y, uh, be distributed as independent normal with mean vector. This mean is not just a number mu, it could be like mu, tau, or tau, two, et cetera. And variance, sigma square, uh, I means it is sigma square, sigma square, sigma square. There is no covariance. It's a, and, uh, and the rank of AI, a, B, N, I, which are assuming. Any of the three conditions, any of the bottom three conditions, any one, just any one of the bottom three is necessary and sufficient. So you have to understand what is meant by necessary and sufficient. Like finding that test and finding the critical region, they're equivalent, necessary and uh, sufficient means it works both ways. If the left side is true, the right side is true. Right side is true, then the left side is true. So they are equivalent. The necessary and sufficient condition that the following two conditions is number one and number two on the top holds. If only one condition below holds, actually, uh, C.R. Rao has also some results in all this. Uh, it could be attributed. So what are the conditions? Y prime A Y is distributed as oh okay no what are the condition if A I is idempotent or is just one condition if A I is this matrix here this matrices are idempotent that means A I times A I equal to A I and A I are symmetric if only that condition holds then this you will know that Y prime A I Y is distributed as a non-central chi-square with n sub i degrees of freedom and non synthetic parameter given by this. Now, uh, I'll briefly mention what is non-central. And it says that this two quadratic form, they are also independent. If only that condition holds, then these two conditions would hold. And they're all independent, and they would be distributed chi square with ni degrees of freedom. And what are those ni? Ni's are the rank of ai's. Or if if if, not, if you can show that ai times aj two different matrices, if you multiply them, you get the zero matrix. And also these two are true. If you can show that the sum of the ranks is equal to n, where n is the rank of a, that is rank of the sum of ai is the sum of the ranks of each ai. If you can even show that. It's a very powerful theorem. There you show one of them, and these two are, you don't have to go through all these proofs and this and that. Now, what is a non central? I don't have time. This central chi square is with one degree of freedom. That's the square of a standard normal. Now, instead, if you want to find the distribution of x squared. This was that was x minus mu over sigma squared. That was a standard normal square. But if you want to find the distribution of x squared only, not no, it is not the mean is not uh, subtracted. The standard deviation is divided. You know all this just x. Then its distribution is not a chi square in the sense we know. It will be a chi-square, a different chi-square. Actually, that chi-square is represented by an infinite sum. It is a mixture of a parso and all and central chi-square. And uh, it is so in our times when we were kind of kids, compared to my age now, uh, we didn't have all those things they couldn't hit because uh, they couldn't simply handle 
uh, all those north, uh, north central chi square. There was uh, nothing to calculate here. You know, there was no tables, no nothing. Uh, these were the primitive times for us. Now there is everything, so we talk about all these things. So this is very important. Remember that there are many theorems like this. And if you go to the next slide, as I told you, you are getting it free. I'm not charging, so be patient. Bear with me. I'm not going through all this. You can look at them. So this is, uh, uh, look at this second line, second line. After we, you uh, sometimes back, I had a thing with a capital lambda less than or equal to lambda. And ultimately, I got two things, one on the numerator, one on the denominator, some kind of sum of squares I got. So I'm looking at some decomposition. That's how we used to be taught when we were younger from here. But I did not, we did not know how they're finding all kinds of other things. On the left side is on the, the first and the second line. The left side is your total sum of squares. And that total sum of squares is partitioned in one, two, three components. The first one, we give it a name due to mean. The second one, it is called due to tau eyes or due to the treatments. And the third one is referred to as due to the error, unexplained variation. So if you do all these things, you can write in different ways, but these three quantities, can be written as y prime y. When I write y prime y, the matrix of the quadratic form is i. That's what I form, put in that form, which is equal to that mean is y prime a1. a1 is the matrix of the quadratic form this. a2 is connected with the quadratic form of the middle one. And a3 is with the third one error. So. This is sum of squares of total equal to sum of squares due to mean plus tau plus. So each one is related to each one. Okay, please go to the next. We want to finish it quickly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm suppose a1, a2, etc. I'm giving the actual case. I wrote them like this, but you would like to know what they really are. And I had to work out a little bit for some of them. This was okay. This was sum of y i square. It is simply y prime. And then i times y. So this is easy. This is the total sum of squares I have written below. That's what can be represented as a quadratic form like this. Okay, please. Next. This is the second one due to mean. Y dot dot. Look at the thing at the bottom. That left dot has no meaning. Just one of those word things. So it is the A1. I'm trying to find the A1. And that is the sum of square due to mean. That can be written like this. All these coefficients are equal. If you multiply this, uh, it would be all, you know, this, this will come as y dot dot square over 5. You can, you should take these things at home. Okay. Uh, so this is the first one. Uh, oh, one thing before you move. Uh, do you remember what is the degrees of freedom associated with the total? It is always one, right? Just add the diagonals. What do you get? One fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth. It is one. To multiply this matrix by itself, you will get the same matrix. So one is that's the that is what the degrees of freedom is. There is only one independent vector here, a column or row. So degree, the degrees of freedom is simply the rank of this matrix. matrix. Okay, please go to the next. This is for the sum of square due to treatment. That's a, so I had to really play around and it was for an 84, 85 year old guy, it's difficult. It takes time, you forget this, you this and that. It, it, ultimately I got this. You should take this. If you take this, simplify this, you will get this. Your y2 is this matrix here. You multiply this matrix with this matrix, you will get the same matrix. You add this 310 plus 310, 215, 215, 215. So common denominator is 30. So this is 2 plus 2 plus 2. 6 times 2 is 12. And this would be 3 plus 3, 
times 9 times 2, 18. 18 plus 12 is uh, 30. So 30 divided by 30 is 1. So if you add the diagonals, its rank is 1. Or degrees of freedom is 1. So we have two treatments. Remember when you studied, it says number of treatments minus 1. That's what you see here. 2 minus 1. That is 1. And the last one in this. Uh, other other slide yes so this is the hard one the error the error can be written the, uh, that is uh, that error is really sum of double sum of y i j minus y i dot bar square that can be written in this way and uh, this is the matrix it's, again, you multiply, you will find it. You get the. I had to check myself just to make sure I didn't put a wrong one. Look at the total of the diagonals, the trace. One half plus one half. That is one. Two thirds, two thirds, two thirds, six thirds. That is two. Two plus one is three. How many observations we had? Five. Mean one, treatment one. So five minus one minus one. Is three you see here. You see, if you see these things, you will never forget in your whole life. You will never have a problem understanding what degrees of freedom are. This is how we should read things, how we should understand things. Otherwise, we memorize, we do rote memorization. We, we when I was a student, all I knew how to calculate that and what table. That's what we were taught, you know. Calculate the sum of squares, subtract this, do this, do that. And uh, so hopefully this gave you the whole picture. This little example tells a lot. What is there in the whole? Okay, next slide, please. We are we are almost there. So lambda was like this. I for this test that I was considering. And then I uh, you know like when you find the i square, you know, you have to divide by the expected value of something. So th this is a chi square. This is this top, this top quantity I'm looking at. Uh, it, it had one degree of freedom. The, this is actually the treatment of some square. This is one degree of side divided by one degree of freedom to make it a mean. This is called sum of square due to treatment. So I divided by one degree of freedom to make it mean square of treatment and this is the expected value of mean square to treatment so this ratio is distributed as a chi square with one degree of freedom and with non central parameter equal to this and and uh, this expected value is given by this uh, at the bottom so you don't have to worry about them the next one uh, uh, this expected value of the, the next one is three, uh, the one in the denominator. So I divided by three. I divided by three. I want to find the uh, you know the, the distribution. Go to the next slide. These are the mean square due to error. So f the f ratio is this mean square divided by expected mean square divided by this mean square divided by this mean square now the story doesn't end there this top one and the bottom one these two some means sum of square due to treatment and sum of squares due to error they're also independent from where i get that from that theorem i quoted so i didn't have to prove because if they're not independent there is no f so I put all the values that I showed you, and this ratio becomes this over this. And look at this. When you write that F ratio, that is like truly this. When you write in your ANOVA table, that is. This. But if your hypothesis is true, if the hypothesis is true, then what happens? Tau one equal to tau two. If tau one, if two numbers are equal, five and five, their mean is also five. So tau one and tau two, tau i and tau bar, they're equal. 
So this sum drops off. This becomes zero. It's sum of i equal to one to two and i tau i minus tau over square that becomes zero under. the hypothesis then the sigma square i did not know so now sigma square in the numerator and the sigma square in the denominator they are, they cancel without the hypothesis it has a non central f distribution but when h dot is true then this f has a central f it is not written anywhere like this in, in standard books so we don't know what was happening now you know now, under the hypothesis, because sigma square cancelled, if the sigma square was there, it would not be a statistic. A statistic cannot have any unknown thing. So now this is a F statistic. And it has a central F distribution because the top one determines whether it is non-central or central. This is the story, whole story behind analysis of variance. We have different models, different things. But we do the same things again and again. It took me a while to understand this because I did not understand when I was stood. I did not know. And this is the, at the last one. This is what you prepare and what table. I don't have a data, so there is it is dataless. We have source. Source is mean, mu, uh, then treatment, tau, error, total, and then we calculate sum of squares. And I have given you those. And then we have degrees of freedom. Remember, we saw that trace was one, the trace was one, uh, that error had three, and the total was five. Total was five because I, Y time I, Y, I had, uh, you know, traces five. That is a matrix with rank five. And then we divided mean square, we calculated this, then we divided this. This is what I showed you. And we, ultimately looked at the F table and and also incidentally uh, just one one more one I, I, I do not want to I'm kind of mix up with my slides but I want to I want you to go to okay can you go to slide number 61 61. Uh, three, four. Okay, yes, yeah, yes. Uh, so, my fellow students, if you look at the top line, what do you find? Lambda greater than or equal to k1, right? What does that mean? That means uh, ultimately you are using the right tail of f distribution. Did you ever ask why we reject? Because if it is a, if it is greater than some number, five point seven two. That is the reason. It's a right field test. That's what we are saying. And it is not a left field. It's not less than k two. These are all. All each of these slides have meanings. I spent a lot of time in preparing this for you, and I had to do it, you know, uh, without any help. Of it's from what uh, I thought would be helpful to you. And I really thank you all very much to be patient, to be with me uh, so long. Uh, I'm a diabetic person and my wife was wondering that I might have to use the restroom two, three times, but I do not know. God help me. <laughs> I, I could be here. So thank you very much. I think, uh, thank you all. I cannot hear you. Cannot hear him. Cannot hear you. Cannot hear you. Oh, th thank you, uh, sir, for your nice presentation. Sir, apna ke onik dhono bad, sir. Je eighty plus boyesho apni tin ghanta almost tin ghanta thore lecture dichen. Ita ashole unbelievable. Ebang amader kache amader chhatro der kache ite ite shikhaniyo. Je apni ashole yehi boyesho jodi ato porishram korte parane. Ebang apni slide gulo koror shomai je ki poriman porishram kore sen. Sir, ami jani. Kam time to time apni amoshe jojo kore sen. Ebang ki poriman effort je dite hoye chhe. 
সেটা আসলে আপনাকে ধন্যবাদ দিয়ে ছোট করার মানে কোন উপায় নেই আসলে স্যার আপনাকে ধন্যবাদ দিলে আসলে অনেক কম দেওয়া হবে তো আপনি যে ছাত্রদের প্লাস আমাদেরকে যে অমূল্য সম্পদ আছে দান করলেন সেই জন্য স্যার আপনার কাছে অনেক অনেক কৃতজ্ঞতা স্যার আমাদের আমি অনেকগুলো প্রশ্ন এক্সপেক্ট স্যার আপনি কি সময় হবে কারণ আপনার স্যার আসলে আমি বলতে সাহস পাচ্ছি না যে আপনি আসলে আরো সময় পাই আচ্ছা প্রশ্ন স্যার আমি ওদেরকে কি অ্যাড করব ওদেরকে অ্যাড করব না প্রশ্নগুলো দেখাবো শুধু আচ্ছা আমি ওদেরকে একটু অ্যাড করার চেষ্টা করি দেখি